You all seem to like the tier list I made for ranking all of the computer science classes I took in college, so here is a tier list of all the math classes I took in college. As some quick context, my degree was in mathematics and computer science at UCSD, so basically that means it was a computer science program within the mathematics department instead of, say, either a separate computer science department or a separate engineering department. So I think the major sort of described as like a mathematically oriented computer scientist. So I ended up having to take like a ton of separate math classes. So some of those classes were definitely better than others and here they are. All right, so I grouped a lot of these classes together because there's like, you know, a five course calculus series and you know, like some other like two, two core sequences. So instead of ranking those all separately, since they cover very similar subjects, I decided to group them, but I'll just mention them as a grouping. So the first class we have down here is linear algebra. So this is really an essential class for pretty much all computer scientists and mathematics majors, because you basically go over matrices, Euclidean spaces, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and is honestly ultimately the basis of a lot of future subjects, both in like machine machine learning and like computer graphics. So I personally found this class like pretty difficult, but not really like in terms of the actual subject matter, but like the way the class was actually sort of structured. So my professor wasn't actually great and the lectures ended up being sort of like convoluted and like really confusing. And the exams were like really, really hard, like super difficult. So like the homework would be relatively easy. We just go over things that we, you know, covered in class. and I'd be like, oh, okay, I under understand how to do this. But the exams would literally be so difficult where you had never seen that problem before. So honestly, I think to start off strong, we're gonna put this bad boy in F tier. Now, again, it is a very important class, a very important foundational class for both mathematics and computer science. And I honestly wish I could say I like the class more. Now the subject matter I think is quite interesting, but my experience in the actual class I didn't, I didn't love. So I really wish I liked it a little bit more just because it's, it plays into so much, so many subjects going down the road. Now this next class right here is a five class calculus series. It's called Math 20A, 20B, 20C, 20 D and 20 E. So this is the calculus series for usually STEM majors. And depending on your major, you can usually take a subset of them. So maybe, you know, chemistry might only require maybe math 20 A and 20 B, or maybe computer science might only require math 20 A, 20 B, 20 C. But since my major was in the mathematics department, I had to take all of them, which was super fun. But if you're a non-STEM major, you only had to take, I think like the math 10 series, which had more like limited scope. But you really just cover things like general calculus, analytical geometry, differential equations, and vector calculus with each one of those classes like in the sequence specializing in one of those topics. Now I don't love calculus, but I definitely at the time preferred it to my experience in linear algebra. Now all of the professors I remember being pretty decent, you know, the subject matter, you know, was like meh. You know, again, calculus isn't the most interesting math subject specifically for me. But I honestly, my, my experience in the class was, you know, overall pretty decent. Like the exams were very fair. The homework was very fair. Uh, you know, I ended up doing all right in the calculus sequence. So I'm gonna put this in B tier. Now, obviously the difficulty varied from class to class. Now I remember specifically Math 20B was by far one of the hardest classes. But the other ones I remember like D and E, I think, were actually like pretty decent. And I had a, a very comfortable understanding of what was going on. So just kind of like aggregating them, I think they're all sort of like a solid B tier math class. Now this next class is Math 109, which was mathematical reasoning. And mathematical reasoning is kind of like a, a fancy way of saying you're just going over how to do mathematical proofs. And sort of similar to linear algebra, this is very much a foundational math class because proving mathematical things, I guess you could say, or knowing how to do mathematical proofs ties into a lot of just general computer science as well. So doing things like induction, negation proofs, proofs by contradiction, and set theory. So although this class was actually pretty hard, I remember the professor being pretty decent, a pretty cool guy, and I rem 
remember at UCSD, we would meet in this sort of like hosey basement in one of the uh, math department buildings. And it was a very small class, so it really helped whenever somebody had a question. So I kind of liked the, the size and the structure of this class, even though the content was a little bit more difficult. So whereas linear algebra, the content I didn't think was very difficult, more the structure of the class was difficult. This class, I thought the structure of the class was less difficult, but the content was harder. There's also something sort of satisfying and fulfilling after finally finishing like a hard proof on an exam or a homework, and you see like all the logic. This leads to this, and thus this, and therefore this, and then you, f you follow that entire logic, and you're like, finally, like this actually makes sense. Sense. There's something very rewarding about that, almost similar to sort of like computer science and programming where you like code this logic up, test cases pass, you know, it's doing what it's supposed to really. So that level of satisfaction I felt in this class when you would actually, you know, complete a proof. Now, I didn't do it all the time. I wasn't really, I didn't do terrific in this class. I did okay. Having that sense of fulfillment definitely helps me like this class a little bit more. So for the sake of spreading classes out, I'll put this in, you know, maybe low A tier, high B tier. So this class down here is Math 103A and 103b, which is a two sequence class in modern algebra. Now the name modern algebra, I feel like is a little bit uh, misleading. I think it's more leaning towards abstract algebra because we covered things like group theory, rings, and fields. Now I'm gonna immediately throw this class in S tier and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm not really a huge fan of the subject material on its own. Like I'm not a huge abstract math or abstract or theoretical computer science person, I really like more applied things, but the professor and the structure of this class was top tier at UCSD. The professor was probably amongst the best professors I had at UCSD because she was able to take these really complex and abstract concepts because, you know, you're in like a very abstract algebra class. You're covering things that don't really seem grounded or are sort of hard to conceptualize. She was able to break these down and actually like teach it. So we were you know, able to understand it. And I thought the exams and the homeworks were very reflective of that. So the exams weren't too easy, nor were they too hard. And I feel like for me, that's like a big thing. Cause so if the exam is too hard, it can be very discouraging. It can be very frustrating. Cause you could be like, you know, we've never had this level of difficulty or you may have seen topics that you may have never even really talked about in the class. But if it's also too easy, you may have not felt like you even learned enough or covered some of the important important subjects you may should have. So this class was super fair, both in exams and homeworks. Fantastic professor. I had the same professor for both classes, so 103A and 103B, which was awesome. I made sure to like enroll in her class after taking the first sequence, because I was like, she's a fantastic teacher. I want to make sure I get her for the second class. So honestly, really great professor, meh subject material, but I think that qualifies as an S tier math class. Now the next one is probability, and this was one of the classes I took while studying abroad my senior year in college. Now I mentioned studying abroad before, highly recommend if you get the chance, and it just covered, you know, basic probability or like foundational probability because, you know, for my mathematics and computer science major, you needed at least one class in probability or statistics. So this class fulfilled that and it was honestly just, you know, a regular sort of probability class. The professor was really cool and I think like every week or every other week we had this like probability lab where we would, you know, go to this other building and we would go into groups and we'd go through sort of this packet that was more of a application of the stuff we were learning during the lectures, which was really cool because you got to see like, okay, you just learned this theory. Now actually apply that in a real world situation. So I think that, you know, took some of the theory or some of the abstractness of what we were learning in the lectures and like bring it down to maybe scenarios you would actually use that in the real world, which I thought was honestly really cool. And also the fact that it was, I was taking it while studying abroad, I think made the class a little bit more enjoyable. So we had some homeworks and quizzes that I thought were all, you know, pretty fair. And the final exam I think was actually even open notes, which made it like, way less stressful and I ended up doing pretty well so I think this class definitely deserves an A tier. Also probability and statistics is one of the mathematical concepts or topics 
that actually enjoy more than a lot of other ones. This one down here that you only catch like the end of the word is Math 184A, which was Combinatorix. Now Combinatorix has one of those names that just sounds like kind of impressive and also just kind of intimidating. I was like, oh, do you want to enroll in this like combinatorics class with me? You're like, whoa, combinatorics? You know, at least that's how I felt. So it was more of another type of like abstract math class where you basically go over like partitions, permutations, bijections, and like the inclusion exclusion principle. So the professor was actually pretty decent, but the content I felt like was sort of on the harder side. So I think the exams and the homeworks were, you know, from what I remember, more more fair than linear algebra, but like kind of way below modern algebra. So honestly, for this class, for the sake of spreading things out, let's do let's do high C tier, but also could, you know, go into like a low B tier. Now this concave graph here, or is it convex? was math 171A and 171B, which again is a two sequence class in numerical optimization. So the first class was linear programming with uh, numerical optimization, so more like linear equations. And the second class was nonlinear equations with numerical optimization. And actually for math class, I thought the content was actually interesting. And at least in the first uh, class in this sequence, it felt very uh, rooted in, I guess, reality, or it was very applied, which again, I really like. I like more of the applied mathematics where, you know, where am I actually gonna use this? Where is this being, you know, utilized rather than, you know, what's being researched in in theory or in you know more abstract contexts for this you can imagine a lot of different scenarios where you might actually need to solve a numerical optimization problem or at least formulate one and then have some sort of calculator solve it for you but i you know that aspect of it the more applied aspect of it i actually liked a lot more than some of the more abstract topics like in say you know combinatorics or something so the professor was actually pretty decent and she was really really nice but i remember when we would go through like lectures and taking notes she basically just walked through a powerpoint which is not terrible but i also don't feel like that's the best way of going through notes or like teaching in a math setting some of the exams were really easy and then some of the exams were like really really difficult so i feel like it sort of like balanced it out also i think i remember the homeworks being more on the difficult side but i'm pretty Pretty sure you could uh, you could do it in groups which definitely helped but I ended up doing pretty decent in both of the classes so honestly you know I feel like this class deserves an A tier now this class so this class it says applied mathematics but the topic was actually applicable mathematics and computing and I honestly this was on my transcript and I honestly do not remember what we did in this class nor I do, rem do I remember like anything about it because the the description of the class was very broad and i feel like it's one of the classes where the content you actually cover uh, varies based on what quarter it is because there's like computer science classes and math classes that change based on the quarter so they'll cover like some very specific topic so i'm i'm guessing in applicable math and mathematics and computing uh, same with computer science where they'll cover like VR one quarter and then they'll cover like web mining or something and then they'll cover computer graphics or, or some other other field that switches every quarter. So I feel like this was one of those classes. I just don't remember what subject was actually being taught when I took it. But since I can't remember, must mean that it wasn't too bad or too great. So I think it's only fair that it gets a B tier. And we're down to the last class, which is Math 157, which was Introduction to Mathematical Softwares. Now I've definitely mentioned this class before. It was on my computer science class tier list because it was much more similar to a computer science class rather than a math class because we basically went over all of the softwares you might use as a mathematician or a statistician or you know just as a mathematically oriented computer scientist so things like mathematical python libraries like i think it's called scipy you know matlab it was a super tangible and applicable class like a lot of the things we learned i was like oh i could definitely use this in my career but just compared to some of the math classes that i took that were more 
much more abstract, you know, with the exception of maybe like linear algebra, probability, and numerical optimization, this class felt like I could, I would actually use it in my career or in some sort of side project. So I really, really liked that applied part of this class. Now, I do remember that the homeworks were actually pretty difficult, and I would actually have to go to uh, a lot of the discussion sections because the teaching assistant would basically like go over a lot of the homework problems. And some of the homework problems were like super, super difficult to just solve on your own. So I remember the homeworks being relatively hard, but the professor I thought was really cool. The content I thought was really awesome. I think it was probably amongst my most favorite content in terms of like actual math classes. We got to choose our final project topic. So I chose machine learning, which was honestly really, really awesome. Got to do a little bit of, you know, coding with machine learning, some, some libraries, a little bit of a write up and analysis. And honestly, the content was just seemed very applicable to something I would use in my, my career, like I said. So I think this class, which I've mentioned before, so so it'll be again in an S tier. I believe it was an S tier in my computer science classes tier list and in relation to these math classes, I think it's definitely remains an S tier class. So that's all of the math classes I took during my undergraduate career at UCSD. So you might be looking at this and saying, well, hey, you know, there's only a handful of classes here. But again, some of these classes were grouped. I think I ended up taking around 15 total math classes and then all of the other computer science classes, as well as some, you know, the general education requirements I had to do also as a part of my time at UCSD. So if you're a math related major or you're thinking about becoming one, feel free to leave any questions in the comments below and uh, you know, I'll try to answer them to the best that I can. But again, I'm not an expert in mathematics and most of the stuff I do nowadays is more computer science oriented. So also leave any video suggestions in the comments below. Also, if you're looking for any minimalist programmer techie type of clothing or shirts or sweatshirts, check out some of the clothes I've been designing at nullref.co. My name is Mikey or Michael, whatever you want to call me i make computer science tech programming college advice career advice type videos if any of that sounds interesting consider subscribing to the channel hit the like button to help your boy out with the youtube algorithm we do bad british accents at the end of every video check out one of my past videos my past self would thank you dearly and check out one of my future videos my future self would also thank you dearly that's all from me i hope you enjoyed the tier list hopefully i see you in another one Bye bye